so you can leave that part out. He, uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Doy Gardner and I own Black 13 Tattoo in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Black 13 opened in 2008. Yeah, I opened Black 13 originally with Josh Woods. Uh, I'm not a tattooer, he is. So that was the concept to come together and kind of create something that we didn't feel was very typical at the time. So it would allow us to focus uh, on needs of clients and needs of artists. That would be my focus and then Josh could kind of take over the artistry side and staff that side and stay over that side. Um, so yeah, we had that set up and I think it's probably been seven years or so that I've been on my own there now on the ownership side. I think the biggest thing for me not being a tattooer, I was interested in tattoo art starting at an early age, which was a different world back then. Uh, no internet, so lots of tattoo magazines and daydreaming and, and kind of getting exposed to the idea that uh, if there was an artist that you liked, the ability to travel to that artist and collect work from them was an actual thing. So when I got turned on to that, I started thinking more about <clears throat> who I would want to get tattooed by and kind of getting... Uh, more um, open to the idea of doing that and then also getting more exposure to other artists. And then <clears throat> being in Nashville, uh, I don't feel like there was anything that was focused on uh, extensive tattooing. A lot of good shops, but then no one was traveling to Nashville to get tattooed. A lot of people were leaving the area to get extensive stuff. So that kind of turned on the idea that um, uh, you could do something that could focus on uh, <clears throat> basically catering to that client that is traveling to get work done and then also uh, trying to focus on the artist as well so learning of frustrations from artists about what it is to work in a shop learning about frustrations from clients of like what it is to try to get in with an artist sometimes and I think that was the realization for me was that a lot of times an artist will forget, forget what it's like to be a client and a client has no idea what it's like to be an artist so I think that being kind of the middleman role with me coming in and saying, hey, I can truly focus on the client needs, but also focus on the artist artist needs because tattooing is a full-time job on its own. And I think a lot of times the uh, the shop needs or the client needs would kind of get dropped sometimes because the artist was typically natural, naturally comfortable in their own kind of environment and thought process. So for me, being able to open that up, try to take better care of the artist, to make, take better care of the uh, the client, um, created the concept that we you know eventually ran with and uh, seem to have excelled with, so. Yeah, the brand was a big thing for me. We wanted to feel and look like a tattoo shop, but we also wanted to have a brand that had mass appeal to where, you know, the, the 35 year old soccer mom in the expensive like suburb of Nashville felt comfortable still coming in as well. We wanted something too that we felt like worked for the shop, but they could, could branch out and be more, be it merchandise or any kind of clothing and things like that, which we did better back in the day with all that than we're doing now. Uh, as far as trying to put more out um, but yeah again I think the idea was trying to to really concentrate on each aspect of the business starting with the brand so it would have a mass appeal and then just trying to create something that was memorable in the city to where it could connect even if people weren't getting tattooed uh, they still recognize the brand um, and then if that did transition to wanting to get tattooed then hopefully that kind of made that connection and people were uh, more likely to find us or think about us we did a lot of um, video stuff, you know, a lot of print ads in the very beginning and then as the internet's grown, tried to ride that wave as well to, to continuously, uh, continuously push that brand as well. It's, it's wild to think about the people that have come through and that I like to think about too, like I think we've kept some of those people in it. Like for one, to, to have someone that has notoriety and a name already that wants to come and be a part of our structure is really interesting and I think that also made us feel good about, hey, we're doing something right. Like it's, it's not typical for the industry, but we're doing something right and people do want to be taken care of. And if a shop is going to take money, then let's put that money back into the artist. Let's offer health insurance. Let's do things that take better care of the artist and give them a better quality of life. So to see some yeah, people. Yeah. For sure. So the idea was to have a staff that would actually oversee each artist and all their clientele. Um, and so that started out with me originally trying to create a structure that I felt was good for a client to participate in and also allow me again to kind of be that middleman, take that information from a client to the artist and kind of go back and forth till everybody felt good and was actually to get able to get something set up and locked down. So that, that was one concept is like, hey, you don't have to basically focus on the art. We'll take care of everything else. Uh, and once we kind of got that structure developed, then it's like, 
looking at basically how any small business or a successful small business would run and how they take care of people. And I think the industry kind of skipped out on that for a long time. So to think about, hey, we can actually, we're, we're a big enough size to offer health insurance. And I think we've been doing that for maybe 12 years now. Um, so anything that we felt like we could do that, you know, or adapt from a successful small business is what we wanted to participate in. So we've been trying to not only tweak the client experience and how do we make that the most streamlined and best for a client, uh, but into like, yeah, just quality of life for an artist. Uh, how can we create something that takes more responsibility or you know, responsibility away from the artist so they truly focused on that drawing for tomorrow every day, basically. Um, so it's been a really great structure. I think we've learned to kind of um, build and, and tailor it a bit a bit because that's the also other a fun dynamic is to, to have now 11 artists and, and navigate everybody's personality and their style and what they like to work within and then have the front staff be aware of that be able to run and, 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 and take care of their clientele too um, so yeah it's been a structure that uh, you know, we were really fortunate we felt good and good about it in the beginning and we're just able to kind of build on that and then not every artist wants to, to have that structure to be in that situation so we know it's not necessarily a one-size-fits-all but over the years to have the artists we've had and in, in the current lineup now um, yeah for everybody to want to participate in that and for me to see that it can be beneficial for someone and actually give them a better quality of life has been, been huge yeah that was one idea is that if a client comes to us and they are a collector they want to get more extensive work that you know, they might not just want a bunch of new school stuff, so the fact that they can slide over and get really nice realism, really nice traditional work, whatever it might be, that was always the idea is how do we keep a client here, basically, because, you know, there is that fear of like, if, if we can't meet their needs, they go somewhere else, fall in love with that shop or, you know, that, that vibe and kind of just stay there. I think a lot of clients will have, you know, especially if they're getting tattooed locally, will kind of have that vibe where it's like, man, this is, this is my shop, I feel good, I get to know people, you know, booking is straightforward and easy. I feel comfortable here um, versus just trying to like hit local shops to get different things done. So yeah, that's always been the idea was we wanted to be a really well-rounded shop when it came to the artistry styles. It was interesting because it was the recession. Uh, so what an odd time to kind of get in that world. And that was definitely scary on our, our end too financially. But because things were differently allowed or different, it allowed us to do some things differently, like jump in a nice downtown building that we never thought we could exist in in the first place. Somehow be able to afford that, and uh, and then yeah, kind of kind of watch everything grow and ride that wave. Um, yeah, we were really fortunate. And then, like you said, the the internet started getting bigger then, so you know, going figuring out how to navigate MySpace and promote a shop on all that kind of learning to get out of print ads, trying to do any big magazine stuff to then merging into online stuff is kind of an interesting thing. And then, yeah, Josh, who uh, owned the shop with me, I think maybe maybe two years in, that's when Ink Master you know, became a thing and he was on the first, first season of that, so he actually did that. I will say, man, like Josh did so well on that show. I was proud of him. He's, he's a really good, well-rounded tattooer and like the new school stuff is, was his thing then, but man. He crushed every challenge he did on that show. So, yeah, we were uh, we were fortunate enough to buy a building. Uh, we've kind of watched Nashville continue to grow, and that's always kind of been my dream is to have ownership and be able to design a space uh, 100%. Leasing a space, we were kind of limited. We were in a big commercial building in the past, and we felt like with the growth in the city, it was time to get out of downtown, and just kind of out of that headache of what it is to to exist and park downtown. Um, so we were lucky enough there was kind of one corridor that hasn't hadn't grown too much in Nashville uh, and we were able to buy that. Uh, I partnered with um, a con um, uh, contractor who actually had built built out one of our spaces in Cummins Station so I got to know him like that or through that project and then yeah we kind of daydreamed about buying something and I think in Nashville that's one of the, the, most, the, the best ways to secure your own business is to own property because now it's in that stage of, you know, the, the owner wants to get out, somebody's gonna offer them a ton of money and then you don't have a place to lease anymore or can't afford it. And it's interesting, it's an interesting setup or we're on two different stories, so we're kind of split, but we've, we've made it work. Uh, and we thought we were, we knew how big we were when we moved in, but we had a space we were gonna lease out, decided to just take that on for ourselves. Um, so that gives us some room to kind of expand if we want to. Granted, at 11 artists right now, we're not, we're pretty happy with where we are. And really fortunate that with that size and three people on the front end helping everything move, 
that it works and everybody gets along. So, yeah, the city's grown tremendously, and then yeah, it seems like um, yeah, artists artists with more notoriety are kind of being uh, attracted to the area, and then a lot of artists are you know growing and learning and growing there and coming up there and doing some really nice stuff for sure. A lot of really good shops in Nashville now. Which, yeah, when I feel, uh, or back in the day we opened, I feel like that was pretty pretty limited. Just a couple of shops that you would want to go to and then uh, to see that grow has been wild. But then also for us to kind of stay relevant um, and, and as busy as we are is, you know, makes us feel really good about our structure and what we're doing. I mean, I think we're just going to keep rolling. We, uh, we daydream about uh, having a shop outside of the U.S. So I think our entire staff uh, would be excited. So I think that's kind of on the list is like, hey, could this be something that potentially also exists in another country to where our staff could, could split their time elsewhere. With all of us getting older and changing, you know, we don't do as many conventions. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so I think just continuing to try to dial in that home life and make sure everybody's comfortable keep that running and flowing the best it can, you know, continue to, to push the brand and it'd be nice to get back into some merchandising, which we haven't done in a while. Um, but yeah, I think just more of the same with a potential, you know, foreign operation, maybe. I can't, I'd love to, I wish I had pictures of some of them when I would be like, all right guys, this is what we're doing, you know, like, Maybe. I've rented a hockey rink and we're going to be a hockey team for this photo shoot and they're just like, what in the fuck? Or yeah, here's your tracksuit. Uh, you have to wear these when we travel, um, which I'm stoked. We still have Steve Martin's um, jacket from his tracksuit, so uh, yeah, yeah, man. But yeah, stuff like that was fun. And that's the challenge sometimes. I think you get in this mode of like trying to do so much and create so much, and then you have all that moving, and so you're kind of in cruise control to keep all that running, and then how do you continuously stay fresh and motivated to keep doing more? Uh, or two, sometimes I feel like, you know, you're busy, so do you justify being like, oh, let's go do this other photo shoot to spend money to advertise when we're turning some clientele away now because we can't keep up. So it's kind of an interesting switch from the beginning to now where it's like, all right, we've, we've done all this. How do we continue to stay relevant, keep the brand fresh, but then also like not just kind of waste money in, in advertising that might not be uh, essential or beneficial, I guess, always. So it's like just keeping that brand relevant keeping everybody happy and excited there for us to do either a group trip or something. Cause I, I will say that as much as they probably hated me for some of the photo shoots and the dumb ideas we did, like it was team building like crazy. I mean, it brought us all closer together and definitely fun to laugh at each other. I remember the stories of the, um, the, the house and the, the lake house and the, yeah. the windstorm. Yeah, man, yeah. We've had multiple times where we thought we were gonna die as a group. And yeah, you end up doing weird shit together and it brings, brings everybody together. I told Brian it's been, yeah, about 15 years in the making of getting down here. Cause you probably, I met you like quick, like early on when we first started. It's been great.